well. Do they know this is your film? Does it matter? Probably doesn't matter, right? Uh, usually, before I even load the film onto the reels, I want to get these chemicals at the right temperature already. So it kind of takes a little bit of time. Not too much time with this uh, sous vide that we got here, but um, I don't really like to wait. So. so what we're doing is we're putting our chemicals in this water. And the idea is that when we heat up the water, it will also heat up the chemicals to the right temperature. Yeah, look at that. I think I even still have it set from last time, 102.5. Boom, run it. While that's cooking, we have our dark bag, little mini dark room that we can load uh, our film in without exposing it. So we wanna put it on these stainless reels that we have here. Uh, but obviously we don't wanna expose the film, so we gotta put it in here in this dark bag. Um, if you've never seen reels before, they make these in all different variations. I prefer the stainless. They last a lot longer. Um, it's, it's a lot harder for them to get messed up, gunked up with all the chemicals, drying up on plastic and whatnot. A um, little bit of a learning curve on these, but uh, well worth the time picking it up. The plastic ones, generally you just put the film in on the top here, and they usually have this like mechanism that has um, kind of like little ball bearings in there so you can kind of just shake it back and forth and it'll it'll suck the film in there for you probably get one of these do it in daylight with a obviously waste waste a roll of film kind of just practicing it just so you could do it uh, in the dark or in a dark bag but uh, takes a little bit of learning all right so these are all going in there once we're in the bag uh, what I can do is just rip these open with your hands, just rip them open. Uh, some people use like the, uh, there's like a little tool, there's like a, kind of like a bottle opener kind of tool that pops the top open. Uh, but I like saving these canisters so I can bulk load film later. So it really helps to have one of these film pullers. Uh, <laughs> these kind of have like a learning curve too, but they're incredibly easy to use. If you've never used one of these before, this is how you do it. You stick both of these, there's two tongues on here. Stick both of them in there. Push this all the way. Sometimes it won't go all the way, so you just wanna push the first tab as far as you can. We're turning this until we hear a click. Boom, magic. Uh, so this guy we're gonna cut we're just cutting this evenly so it can go on the uh, on the reel evenly. Yeah, we're just cutting it straight away. Uh, this is going to go in here. I think the other one I'm just going to rip open. It's not cooperating. Putting this guy in here. Let's see, scissors. So these dark bags, if anybody's curious on how they work, it's literally just two zippers in there to really block all the light out. You know in like, like Grey's Anatomy or something when they're like doing surgery, like in, inside like a case. You know what I'm talking about? When like somebody's uh, somebody, somebody's like really contagious or something. That's what this always feels like. So you obviously can't see it, but I'm taking the reels out now. So that's one. Can't really see it in there again, but one down. It's that natural roll. Pro tip, when you're picking a dark bag, you want to get a big enough one where you have room to mess around with in it like this. Uh, some people want to get just a small dark bag or, you know, something that they feel is compact enough for one tank and one reel. Maybe this is all you're doing it for, but the bigger the bag, honestly, the easier it is to work in. Even stuff like this, I'm cutting the tips of the film in here. I used to have a smaller bag, and I would almost end up cutting the edges of the bag because the bag was so small and there wasn't really wiggle room in here. Later, when these are developed, you're gonna you're gonna be able to see how I 
how it spooled up on there. there you go. The cool thing about color uh, versus black and white is that no matter what film it is, um, the time and temperature and everything is all the same. So you could mix, you know, or whatever whatever types of films you're doing, put them all in one reel and get them all done at the same time. With black and white, uh, you know, certain films either need longer time, uh, shorter time, different agitation technique. Maybe some of them take a different developer or it's, it's better with a different developer. Uh, with color, everything's fair game. The 120 roll here is Ektar. I think we have a Fuji uh, Natura 1600. The other one's a Superior 400. That's a really underrated film, man. It's a really good film. It was an awesome film just to shoot for whatever. Now we get to see the magic of what we are working on. This is the uh, Ektar roll that we pulled out, so all the film's gone. Now it's on the reel. This is, <laughs> this is that Natura roll that I couldn't pull out. The Superior roll, this is the tail end of that. We just cut it in there with scissors. And now this is a perfect candidate for bulk loading. So if I wanted to load different type of film in here, I would just tape it to this end and spool it back on. And now our film is in here. For anybody that doesn't know what this is, this is just a stainless tank. Uh, what this allows you to do is pop this cap open pour our chemicals in here as well as pour them out without light getting to the film. So that way we're not exposing the film. Um, pretty standard. I think this one's made by Omega. Pretty good brand. I think what you normally do with a sous vide is you put uh, meat. I think you put meat. I think you put them in these like plastic bags and you do this same sort of thing. And the sous vide is supposed to cook the food uh, over time. Uh, for our purposes, what we are doing with it is using it to raise the temperature of the water in this bucket, which will raise the temperature of our chemistry, which is uh, submerged into the water. The cool thing about the sous vide is once it gets to that temperature, it'll hold that temperature. So as long as my chemicals are here in this tub, they'll stay just about at 102 the whole time. Right. It's just a pre-soak. We're probably gonna do two minutes of that. It's been about two minutes. I'm gonna pour this out. It's not super interesting. There's probably gonna be some color in this because of the uh, the 120 that we have in here. If I had to guess, it'd probably be green, maybe. Yeah. Look at that. So we're pulling out our developer. We're gonna do 32 ounces of this into this guy for three and a half minutes. Doing this for three and a half minutes. We're gonna agitate for the first 15 seconds or so. A lot of people have different techniques on how they agitate their film. With a bigger tank like this, I like to just do inversions like this, literally just inverting it. With a smaller tank, I like to do kind of like a like a figure eight like this guy. What you don't want to do is shake it. It's a thing you see a lot of first timers do is shake it. Uh, when we put our tank down, we also want to give it a good a good bump. What that does, it gets the bubbles all the way to the top so it's not sticking to your film. Our kit here says that we should be doing three inversions uh, every 30 seconds. Thirty seconds. Whatever it is, that's literally one, two, three, four. Give it a good bump probably notice it's a different color now than what it originally was. That's because it's a little bit exhausted from developing our film here, but should come back to a somewhat normal color. 
honestly, these kits, if you use it really fast um, and you adjust for your developing times, meaning the more exhausted these chemicals are, you kind of start adding adding more time on the tail end. Uh, you know, I've squeezed you know close close to twenty rolls on one of these. Uh, not sure if I would recommend that, but if you're on a budget, you know, it's the best way, cheapest way to develop your film. I think it comes out to cents per roll at that point. Now we have our blicks. This is our bleach and fix mixture. It's basically the same thing. We're doing 32 ounces of this. This is a 32 ounce tank. And this blix is going to be here for, I think, six and a half minutes. So just about double the time of our developer. This is our fixer. So this is kind of what seals the deal on our development. Uh, this will clear the last bits of our film here. Make sure that it'll stay the way that it is. It's our stabilizer. It's the last, uh, that's like the last part of this process. All right, we're pouring the sucker out. It's probably also the part where like people usually use a funnel, but you're a boss like me and you got steady hands. You don't really need that. Now that uh, we did our blicks, we can actually open this canister now. And we could kind of get a peek at what our film is looking like. Let's bring a little watch right there. So this is this is usually like this is the oh shit moment because it, at this point, if you if you look at your film and there's no images on here, this is you just wasted a bunch of time. So there we have your what is this? Oh, this is where you opened it, bro. That's the part where you opened it, so I can see that. Yeah, so it looks like you only ruined one frame. The rest of these frames are probably good, but this is what I was doing in the black bag earlier was. Putting this in the reel this way. Look at that. Look at that technique. We want the temperature of this wash to be just about the same, so same as the, the chemicals. So we want this to also just be close to about 102, 105, something like that. Just about there. I have this open right now, but uh, there's actually a method, it's like the Ilford uh, method, where you fill this you fill this guy up and you agitate it a few times. I think in that way you're just, you're not wasting so much water by having it running the whole time. You're kind of just inverting it, mixing it up in there. I think it won't. I think the Ilford method is. I know there's a two in there. Probably do this 12 times, 20 times. It's definitely a lot better than running the sink the whole time. Now we're going to put our stabilizer in here. out. All right. So now these are good to hang. Look at that, dude. Really well exposed.
I'm using these PEC pads to clean some of the uh, water spots that we have here. Ooh. Right. Oh yeah, dude. Look at that. That's pretty sweet, dude. Pretty sweet. Sound select. That's for sure. Well, these are exposed really well. Alright. That's a wrap for that.